Good morning, Old North Church. Today's Reformation moment takes me back to my childhood. Growing up in a Protestant church, I remember looking down the walls during the sermon, sorry for not listening, Dr. Kantner, and seeing stroppy looking men of whom we had bust of on the wall, names and images of the likes of Luther and Calvin, Knox and Pharrell, all staring down on me. And for a while, I thought it was the Church Softball Hall of Fame. Guys back in the 1920s who put us on the map for Trumbull County Church softball dominance. But later on, I realized that these men were on the wall because they were men who fought and suffered for the biblical faith that was passed down to me some 470 years later. And this is why we remember the Reformation. These men contended for the faith of the Bible. And for that, we should be grateful and do everything we are able to pass down that same faith. And we do that by learning Reformation theology. That's why we've been going through the solas, faith alone, scripture alone, grace alone. Today I want to talk about another sola, Christ alone. And I do so by introducing you to another reformer who doesn't get the same press like Luther or Calvin, but was just as instrumental in the Reformation. His name was Huldrych Zwingli. We get the impression from the statues or paintings of these men that they were serious, stern men. But in truth, most of them were very much characters. One of Zwingli's first public rebuttal of the Roman Church's teaching was on the first day of Lent in 1522. He wanted to dispel the idea that one can earn or work himself or herself into God's favor through man-made traditions. Lent was a time that one would give up meat to imitate the sufferings of Christ. So Zwingli and some of his friends decided to make a point and distribute in the public square smoked sausages and eat them in front of everyone. Yes, that's right. My kind of man. But Zwingli had a much more important point in his life and ministry. And that was the same point of Christ alone. The Roman church at that time taught that one could get into God's favor and remain there only through traditions and the sacraments, especially those of the Eucharist and the Mass. But Zwingli believed very much in the theology of the New Testament, which teaches, like in Hebrews 9, that there is only one mediator between God and man, and that is the man Jesus Christ. And his mediation happened only one time because that was completely sufficient for all those who put their faith in him. Whether it was the sacraments or Mary or other saints, Zwingli taught that these were unnecessary and very often unhelpful distractions. No, it is Christ and Christ alone who atones for our sins. It is Christ who died once for sins, the righteous for the unrighteous, to bring us to God. And it is Christ who continues to mediate for us at the Father's right hand, so we have full confidence that our Father loves us and hears our prayers. Listen to how Zwingli himself puts it. The summary of the gospel is that our Lord Christ, true Son of God, has made known to us the will of his heavenly Father and has redeemed us from death and reconciled us with God by his guiltlessness. Therefore, Christ is the only way to salvation of all who were and now or shall be. And with that last line, Zwingli brings us into the 21st century and the importance of Christ alone for us today. Perhaps the challenges look and sound different, but they are very much the same. Other ways, other systems, other people, other worldviews will always compete with Christ and tempt us to say Christ and something else will help us get right with God, or Christ plus some additional work, or there may be other ways to God. But Zwingli with the apostles remind us that Christ is the way and the truth and the life and no one comes to the Father except through Him. Brothers and sisters in Christ, keep your eyes fixed on Him and Him alone. He is the author and perfecter of your faith now and in the future.